The two day students seminar on Tiger organized by Ramakrishna Mission Vidya Mandira, Belur. And I am immensely thankful to the organizers because such a platform is indeed very much necessary for the task like these, the inter interdisciplinary studies. So, at the very outset, I would like to quote one very magnificent person in the field of wildlife. Obviously, it is, it is uh, within the quotation that most of us would agree that a tiger is one of the world's most beautiful creatures. Sadly, in the wild, it is threatened with extinction. <coughs> but is a tiger in a cage truly a tiger? I doubt it. Let us have the effect first of all. A tiger in the cage truly a tiger? I doubt it. To see the true essence and the beauty of a tiger, you have to see it in the wild. And that is why that is what we are going to do in this paper. I think um, I will be able to take all of us to our childhood and here, here I present the very very much debated character who is actually widely known to be an antagonist. <coughs> Representation of Sheikh Khan, an individual with multiple appeals. As we know, Sheikh Khan appears in the first of the Mowgli stories called Mowgli's Brothers in the Jungle Book. Actually, the total entire edition is known as the Jungle Books, comprising two volumes of Kipling's works, The Jungle Book, written in 1894, and The Second Jungle Book, written in 1895. Well, right from the beginning, as he appears before us, we are very much habituated to speculate him as a typical antagonist, a rival of Mowgli, with all sorts of sinister approaches on his physique and face. But, our Shere Khan's word and the actions that we use to analyze from different points of view really are the actions of an antagonist? There is a little bit doubt regarding this because as we know, as Kipling presented him in the Jungle Book, this is a common, um, you know, commonly presented view of a tiger as an antagonist or as a perfect villain. But it is very interesting to note that several production houses from time and again, since uh, 1937 to 2018, just a year ago, eager to display the Jungle Book in different versions. And obviously, every ethic of adaptations says that new kinds of interpolations can be done in terms of the in terms of representing the character. So, I think uh, there is time for us to reconsider Shere Khan's character is not only as an antagonist, but a purely white tiger with all sorts of feline masculinities and grace, as we can find out him. As you can see, I have presented a slide at a glance, uh, which reveals Shere Khan's certain traits that we can find in his characters. Four of the representations are made here. Well, I think, ha. Huh. Closest, the most close one to the Kipling's work is The Adventures of Mowgli, a Russian adaptation of the Jungle Book, which was actually, it was uh, primarily fragmented in five parts, but later on, in 1973, it was combined and appeared on the screen, entitled as Adventures of Mowgli, directed by Roman Javidos. As you can see in the in English version, Scott McLean presented the Shere Khan's voice, and in the main Russian version, the voice was lent by uh, A. Papanov. Now, why I am saying this, this is uh, bearing the most, the, the very much of the exactitude with Kipling's work. I am uh, taking out some of the excerpts because uh, maybe uh, I may run out of the time because in a stipulated frame, it is almost a little bit of uh, difficult to discover the mindscape of a character because a tiger, when, when, when we used to see a tiger, we should remember that we are not only watching or speculating a tiger, we are observing a character because as we all of us are acquainted with the fact that Shere Khan along with all other uh, Kipling's rendition of animal character is 
and anthropomorphic character. Certain human traits are uh, implemented on his character. So, close to the textual version of the uh, is a Russian adaptation of Mowgli stories, as uh, you can see here uh, on the screen. Here, Shekhan's persona finds its expression through the voice of Scott Maitlin and A. Papanov, and perhaps this is the large proportion of exactness. Here, Sher Khan feels the guts to assert, it is I, Sher Khan, who speaks. As you can find, I have actually uh, put a screenshot from the Russian version with the English subtitle. And um, in his first appearance during an arrogant conversation with Raksha, the mother wolf who, like all other characters of Kipling, is uh, differentiated in different disparate versions. When he comes to the wolf's pact and uh, snatch away the newly found infant, considering him as his property, mere property, to Sher Khan Mowgli is a mere property. And the tiger's tone must be dominating in his appearance, as we all know. In fact, when we speculate a tiger, apart from its very wild existence, the real existence, the transliterated versions are really a blissful appearance uh, and proper justice, aesthetical justice to our national animal. And um, to be very frank, Kipling had never failed to intonate his supreme feline creature with the tone of such mighty autocrat. Now, why I am saying mighty autocrat, that will be revealed in the next slides. And he entirely careless of everything. Um, widely, he uh, does not care for the law of the jungle. Quite interestingly, an interrogation arises in our mind that why on earth the law of the jungle, which renders the message to keep the peace with the lords of the jungle, the tiger, the panther, the bear, such creatures, that lord, you can see the, uh, at the top of the hierarchy, tiger is presented. So why the lord himself is disobeying the law of the jungle? Is really a kind of disobedience in the true sense of the term? Well, let us have a look. Serkan's personality tempts him to act in accordance with such uh, in accordance with his own will. Such kind of persona is perfectly, um, very much suitable to him. So far as the depiction of the scenes is concerned, David of's version of Mowgli's stories represents themselves to be in the mold of perfect ancient wilderness. Yeah, ancient wilderness I mentioned that is uh, because of, uh, this is where the entire jungle fears the tiger and the tiger takes pride in his supreme being, in his absolutism. We know <laughs> Regarding from the recent activities that we human beings are performing from time to time, man is the most unwelcome creature in the jungle, and in everyone's eye, he is a true destroyer of nature. This view is more important and more relevant, as I have really st uh, recently stated. The acceptance of Mowgli in the midst of the jungle dwellers is an odd phenomenon, and <coughs> except the wolf parents, the wolf pack, Bagheera, the melanistic leopard, uh, who is very much a uh, very much endearing character to us, Balu, the sleepy brown bear, um, and Ka, the python. It is Sher Khan who really protested against Mowgli's upbringing among the wolf pack and the jungle, as you can see. And obviously, there was a golden jackal called Tabaki, Sher Khan's sidekick, um, who protested Mowgli's inclusion in the pack. And cruel, intelligent, and cunning, Sher Khan is fearless of most of the things. We shall be discover, discovering and rediscovering his characters. Now, uh, just skipping over some of the slides. Yeah, this is the ne uh, next one, the Jungle Book, Disney animated version. In fact, uh, this is the first animated series of the Jungle Book. The first film version was made in 1937. It was entitled as The Elephant Boy. And this is the first animated version and the last one that was produced by Walt Disney himself in 1967 and directed by Wolfman Riedelman. As you can see, George Sanders played the voice of Sher Khan. But I uh, won't invest much of my time to elaborate this session. You can find it out on the slide that I have made that it is merely a childhood classic where Sher Khan upholds the traditional view that, that is much talked of. But let us skip forward a little bit and rediscover him in the mold of the perfect wilderness, as I have said in describing um, David Hoff's version, the Russian and animated version of the Jungle Book. He is a pure wild tiger after all, and relating the fictional details with that of the facts would be an interesting one to notice. Let us have a look. Yeah. You can see the key traits of Sher Khan's character here, and at the last point I have mentioned the replica of Ravana at the end of the 
end of the battle. In episode number 38, we can see the Mowgli stabbed him and killed Shere Khan. But when we was discussing the matter that he is the breaker of the jungle laws, let us have, before concluding this speech, I would like to show you what sort of self-employer of jungle law he was. Just have a look of this mighty autocratic, uh, tone of mighty autocracy. And they will, then we will skip over some of the slides. Is it audible to everyone? It's a jungle law, Manka. Who are you to say whether it's good or bad? The man Khan obeys the laws of the jungle much better than some I could name. The great Shere Khan would prey on humans, and that is breaking the law. Don't you remember? Not this one. The first law of all. When you're hungry, you eat. I was hungry an hour ago, but then I had a feast. Now there's one less human. I need a drink of water. Now there is one less human. Such a tone of autocracy there is. And now let us um, have a look at several moments that Fumio Kurokawa, the director of the Japanese anime version, displayed. There are some of the wounds that a tiger uh, could receive. And it is very much display of the reality that today we are witnessing. You can see Shere Khan is stabbed at his heart. And uh, such an extension, uh, just look at the face. He is not at all fearless. He is, has some kind of fear. He is a pyrophobe, as we know, uh, very much aware and very much uh, afraid of the red flower, the fire, the very much uh, recognized innovation of human beings. Also, he was afraid of the gun shoots, the sound of the gun shoots. And um, this is one of the screenshots that I have collected from episode number 14, the cold bait. And this one, obviously, Two of the comparative studies of Shere Khan, uh, the Jungle Book Disney animated version and the Legend of the Jungle, which is the Netflix version, that would be talked later on by one of my fellow presenters, and that would be detailed. Uh, that will have a de detailed kind of discussion, detailed kind of elucidation. And are you familiar with this? Here are two comparative close anime adapta adaptations. One is obviously the 1989 Japanese adaptation, and another is uh, Simba the King Lion, 1995, which was telecasted up to 2001, if my memory is working properly. And here, Italian TV producer Orlando Corradi has represented Shere Khan, and such is his extension. Shere Khan, actually, he is not dead. He is textually dead, but symbolically, such kind of sufferings are going on. And this is the eternal allegory. As you can see, Don Randall has uh, represented the tiger in the mold of post-mutiny allegory. And in the indentation, you can um, clearly link the 1857 situation when India was going through under the constant battle against the British ones. And here, obviously, the martyr, theme of martyrdom is very much important because he died with no intention. He wanted to protect the jungle from the man, from the human, uh, what can I say, well, he human invader in terms of Mowgli. And here is Ustad, who was alleged, was an alleged manager, uh, sent in captivity on 8th May 2015. The sacrificer, of course, he is not dead, still alive very much, and could have been relocated to wild, relocated to wild. And here is the sacrificer and the martyr of me, who recently stole the heart of all of us in terms of a new value of conservation and wildlife ethics. So thank you so much for representing such a wonderful platform and paying a careful attention to this.